For the past year, much of the energy debate has focused on going nuclear. The Prime Minister has even taken charge, holding his own inquiry into the feasibility and safety of nuclear energy. But not everyone is convinced of its virtues and there's a chorus of people saying that renewable energy is being left out of the mix. In a world first, a new green source has emerged in regional Western Australia. You might be surprised to learn that source is the native Mallee, which is making a comeback in the bush after decades of widespread clearing. Elvira Newich reports. For big business, the energy debate is black and white. Currently on a cost basis, renewable energy is much more expensive than oil and gas. And renewable supplies will never play more than a very minor role. The main game really needs to be for us to look at reducing the emission profile from coal-fired power stations. Australia first dreamt of a renewable energy future back in the 1970s. The world was in the grip of an oil crisis, worldwide supplies were threatened and scientists like Phil Jennings turned their minds to alternative fuels. We saw that uh, in the future um, we, uh, renewables will be the only uh, energy sources we have to rely on because we're going to run out of, of oil and gas. Three decades on and oil prices are again at record highs. Around the world, renewable energy has boomed, but in Australia it's lost momentum and that, critics say, is the fault of big business. Governments, no matter which political persuasion, have been beholden to the coal industry because it's such a big, powerful uh, industry. Coal, um, oil and gas are really going to be the mainstays of our energy mix through the next 25 years. Western Australia has got a vested interest in ensuring that it maintains its competitive advantage as the premier minerals and energy state in Australia and indeed as one of the great minerals provinces in the world. Since its inception, renewable energy has faced an uphill battle to prove it can compete with oil, coal and gas. Now a new biomass alternative has won the support of the Energy Minister, Fran Logan. The breakthrough centres around the humble native Mallee, which even grows in salty soil. It has some huge benefits and all of the technology is actually a world first and, uh, and absolutely unique. It's, uh, it's really quite exciting stuff. For 10 years, more than a 1,000 wheat belt farmers have been growing eucalypt mallees as part of a Western Power trial. The crop was recently harvested and in Narragin, the mallee trees were used to produce electricity using a state-of-the-art processing plant developed in WA. The trial was the first of its type in the world. I've asked uh, Verve to look at moving to commercial production. I've asked them to go ask for expressions of interest as a joint venture to actually take that plant to a commercial uh, stage. But it almost never happened. Initially, the technology didn't work and only weeks ago, the government ordered the plant be shut down and the trial abandoned. But Western Power argued for more time and money. The minister agreed and the breakthrough came. What we'd like to see is, and again, this is, a, is a, a very unusual, it would be a world first. Um, we would be looking at up to 10 5 megawatt plants spread throughout the wheat belt. The benefits of the biomass technology don't end with electricity. The new power plants will bring jobs and economic growth to the wheat belt and more. You get salinity benefits from it. You get activated carbon, which is good and has good prices in the market. You generate electricity and you get a eucalyptus oil. And the recent technical paper I was reading about eucalyptus oil is if you crack eucalyptus oil, you can get significant amounts of ethanol. The quantity of ethanol is huge, ten times more than is produced using wheat. It could become another option for the state's first ethanol plant planned for Quinana. The development has thrilled renewable energy supporters. Biomass goes very uh, well uh, with 
uh, agriculture, and agriculture is one of our largest industries. In fact, it's something that the farming community should be embracing because uh, it's an alternative line. Instead of selling uh, biomass crops for food, they can also be selling them for, for energy. But for the Greens, it's not enough. Australia has the highest greenhouse gas emissions per capita in the world. The Greens say it's time wind and solar energy also took centre stage and say government should force industry to clean up its act. Every other country who's been successful in achieving a high level of renewable energy has implemented renewable energy targets and then they've also put in place really clear mechanisms and to, to drive investment. In 2001, the federal government made it compulsory for energy providers like Verve to source at least 2% of their electricity from clean green sources. That generated $3 billion in investment and saved almost a billion tonnes in greenhouse gas emissions. But the project won't be extended and the Greens want the state to set its own target of 20% renewable by 2020. It will make our current energy sources much more expensive and will run the risk of it becoming non-competitive. Our energy sources in Western Australia currently underpin the state's prosperity. We need to ensure that we maintain our competitiveness so that we can continue to attract these projects to Western Australia and we can sustain them in this state. Of all the economic modelling we've done, doesn't indicate as large an impact as, as the CME have indicated. So I think, I think they may well be exaggerating that point. The state government has committed to setting a target for 2020, but is still undecided on what it will be or whether the sourcing of renewable energy will be mandatory. Unless it's prepared to face off with the powerful coal industry, Australia's biggest export earner, nothing's likely to change. Supporters of sustainable energy say without legislation, the economic boom will pass and WA would have lost its best chance to move away from dirty energy and towards a green future. The world is changing and that Australia is becoming a bit of a backwater in energy research because uh, we have uh, a government that isn't facing up to reality. Elvira Newich with that story.